We have breaking news here on the Law and Crime Network. There is a verdict in the Timothy Jones case. We're waiting to go live in the courtroom where we will stream it. We don't know what it is yet, but we know that the verdict is in. This is after a little over six hours of deliberations by the jury. Make sure to stick around. You do not want to miss that. Uh, in the meantime, you can still watch the Delgado trial and the Winslow trial. Both are streaming live on Law and Crime. Dot com. Uh, also, we're going to review some of the Jones testimony now while we wait for that verdict to be read in the courtroom. This is the prosecution's closing arguments. Take a listen. That's the prosecutor's hard hitting closing arguments in the Timothy Jones case. I have Joseph Scott Morgan here to help break down some of what we saw during that case. He's a professor of forensics at Jacksonville State University. Joseph, thank you so much for being with me here today. Great to be back on with you, Misty. Of course. Always love to have you. Now, this case was actually heart wrenching to watch. Whenever you have a case that involves the murder of children and here you have five children and you have these salacious facts uh you know the defendant driving with their bodies in the car for nine days this is a very difficult case for a jury no matter what's presented and here they have to make a decision about insanity what did you make of this case well from the beginning you know i've stated that there was planning uh that went into this and uh, you know, just from an investigative standpoint, when I observe things, I, I view it from the perspective of if you if you have the intellectual capacity to plan things out in detail, which he did, uh, there's very little room uh, for uh, debilitating psychopathology, uh, where it has driven him to the point of total and utter madness. So I have, you know, I, I don't I don't have much latitude here. The courts say otherwise. But when you have made lists, uh, when you've purchased items, uh, when you have gone to certain locations with specific intent, um, uh, it, it just it goes beyond the pale. And unfortunately, we're seeing more and more of these cases nationwide. Yeah, we really are. Um, and and the insanity defense is a very difficult one to to raise. Yes, now we are going to court. It looks like there's some activity in the courtroom. We're going there live now. Breaking news here on the Law and Crime Network. Tip, uh, Timothy Jones found guilty of all five counts of murder for the murder of his five children. This came just now live streamed on Law and Crime Network just about six hours of deliberation by the jury. I want to bring Joseph Scott Morgan in to talk a little bit about this. Joseph, I think you hit the nail on the head. To me, this was, I really saw a guilty verdict coming because when you're raising a defense of insanity, you have to show that somebody did not know right from wrong. So when you have any acts that are, that go towards the planning or preparation or the cover up of the murder, you have a problem from a defense standpoint. Are you surprised by this verdict? No, absolutely not. Guilty, 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 guilty. He is guilty. He is guilty. The blood is on his hands of these five precious little children, whom, as you stated earlier, rode around in a truck with their bodies decomposing, looking for a place not to just openly, openly get rid of them, but to hide them to disguise them. He even showed up with muriatic acid to clear the van up. At one point in time on the list, it was noted that he wanted to dissolve the bodies, uh, which to me is just striking. He bought a hacksaw. You know, I got to tell you, this guy did some planning, Misty, and, and I think that justice in this particular case has been served. Yeah, the jury really saw through that, Joseph. Just as you said, when you have the planning aspect, no amount of experts on the stand talking about schizophrenia are going to overcome that. Now, what we know to happen next is going to be the penalty phase of the trial. And Joseph, he faces the death penalty. Now, we know that requires showing of aggravating factors. What do you think here? I, I think that the jury is going to have 
a lot to weigh in this case. This is actually a pretty solid death penalty case. Yeah, I think that it is. He, he faces the death penalty, Misty, uh, in Mississippi. All right. He faces, I mean, I'm sorry, in, uh, in uh, South Carolina. So he faces it there. And there is, there is a high likelihood uh, that he's going, to, he's going to get the needle more than likely. Uh, I got to tell you, just the, the picture that he painted of his life uh, through, merely portrayed through his activities uh, is going to show that there are, in fact, aggravating circumstances here. I think the defense counsel is going to have a very difficult time and an uphill battle you know, keeping keeping the judge at bay or the jury, whoever makes the final determination, the judge will make the final decision, uh, keeping them at bay as we move down the road with this case. Right, because they'll have the opportunity to present these mitigating factors, and some of that is going to be about uh, about mental capacity and whatnot. But obviously, the jury did not buy that insanity defense as predicted Joseph Scott Morgan. We have to go to a break. Make sure to stick around. We'll have more on this when we return.